firecracker meatballs with roasted green beans and jasmine rice. Why, that is just one of the delicious new fall recipes I've discovered thanks to HelloFresh. Find out why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FACE14 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. Is this face? Did we start? Yeah, I think we started. Welcome to face okay. episode 74. There we go. It started. No, no it's Jeff. 75. 75, 75 part two, act seven, season three, two. What season uh, this are we is on? Season two, year two, episode 75. How many episodes of season one and how many episodes are we into for season two? Uh, I don't expect anyone to actually know. I'm just kind of saying that. Are, are yeah, we at the like, mid season finale yet? That's the thing. Did you? So when I got Disney Plus, one of the most fascinating things was seeing how they did seasons for kid shows. There will be like 700 episodes in season one and then season two is six. Like, I don't know <laughs> how they decide that line. I feel like that's what we're doing. We'll have a million episodes in season three and season four will be four. Just break it up. Have it be completely uneven, nonsensical, which fits for the show. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of fitting for the show, uh, does anybody have any fruit-related content they wanted to throw out? I don't, but I... I'm all fruited out. <laughs> We're all fruited out. I, I am equally fruited out, but I do have a very serious question for Gavin. And I've okay. talked to... This, this blew my mind. And I shouldn't even... Te when do you think the high five was invented, Gavin? You had to put a year on it. <laughs> we did talk um, about this yesterday. <laughs> what year? What year do you think the high five was invented? Oof. Um, 600. The year 600? That's your yep. guess? AD or BC? So, yeah, that's another great AD. question. AD. Who, who doesn't specify BC? So in your, so <laughs> you, so in your mind, assuming uh, Jesus existed, he existed in a world without a high five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just want to make sure. Oh, so it's got to be way earlier than that. Um, I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> well, I feel like were people really tracking that in, you know, if it was 2500 BC, would anyone be like, hmm, invent, invented a high five today? <laughs> uh, oh, shit. I have no. Uh, oh, uh, I, okay. I'm going to re guess. Okay. Go ahead. 10. 10. <laughs> <laughs> You're so wrong. You're so far off. I thought you'd get, I thought you'd get closer on the second one. You got further. And there wasn't a lot of room to get further away, but you did. Oh. <laughs> when was it I was watching, so for context, I was watching a playoff baseball game between the Houston Astros and the White Sox. And uh, the, Fuck the, the Astros, by the way. Fuck the Astros. The announcers, and like late in the game, just randomly throw out, like, oh, yeah, manager of the Astros, Dusty Baker, inventor of the high five. <laughs> Dusty Baker apparently invented the high five in 1977, Gavin. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's, that, Absolutely that's not. the, no, that's the Wait, immediate you, you're reaction. The people were, like, storming Normandy before the high five? Yeah, the yeah. high five was not a popular thing. They, they were storming Normandy with no way to celebrate. <laughs> They just, they did it, they got through, and they were just like, oh, yay, I guess. They, they just shook hands. <laughs> it was the low five. Now, that's the thing. The low five has been around since the 20s, I believe, in the history <laughs> research that I've done. <laughs> He's saying that no one before that has no. ever just sl <laughs> no, 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 their no. two hands together. No, no. Now, that's, that's another divisive point. Now, there, yeah. the, Dusty Baker is the most common like inventor of it. There are other documentations of high fives before that point, but I don't think they were called the high five, and I don't think it was like their thing. It was maybe a thing they did once. So he just named the high five. No, he didn't name it. He, I would argue they popular. Here, I'm just going to read you an excerpt <laughs> of the first high five that happened, okay? The conventional wisdom has been that the origin of the high five occurred between Dusty Baker and Glenn Burke of the LA Dodgers at Dodger Stadium, October 2nd, 1977. <laughs> How did they both know how to do it? 
No, this I'm getting to that. The oh. last day of the regular season in the sixth inning, Dusty Baker hit a home run off Has Houston Astros pitcher J.R. Richard. It was Baker's 30th home run, making the Dodgers the first team in history to have four hitters with at least 30 home runs. It was a wild, triumphant moment and a good omen as the Dodgers headed to the playoffs. Burke waited on deck, thrust his hand enthusiastically over his head to greet his friend at the plate. Baker, not knowing what to do, smacked it. In quotes, <laughs> his hand was up in the air and he was arch way back, says Baker. So I reached up and hit his hand. It seemed like the thing to do. That I is like the that. origin. He didn't know I what like to do. That. I've been left hanging in the year like 2020. <laughs> the guy that had never, no one had ever done a high five and he wasn't left hanging. <laughs> it blew my mind. No, there are other people like I've read a thing that apparently Magic Johnson also claims that he invented the high five in like 1978. There are different <gasps> stories, there are different origins, there are different things you could point to, but the most <laughs> popularized version, the most popularized invention, or the person who invented it, is Dusty Baker. Dusty Baker is credited as the high five guy. I'm blown away. I was blown away. I was telling Andrew, it's kind of like how uh, the, the mullet... Uh, hairstyle has been around for a very, very long time. It was super popular in the 80s, but it wasn't called the mullet until the Beastie Boys did it in 1994. <laughs> I was in the army before the mullet became the mullet. And you would, I would assume that was like 100 years ago. So imagine the Beatles. Um, they were, they're all just got out of a car. There's a big <laughs> crowd waiting for them. The crowd, they've all got their hands in the air. The Beatles just walk by. Yeah. They it's don't not, know. Been, not been invented yet. It's not a thing that's... Yeah. yeah. Hasn't been invented yet. Nobody knows. Maybe a, maybe a low five. Maybe they did a, low a low five. A low five, very much invented, popularized. Yeah, been around since the 20s. not the high five. The high five is a relatively new creation. I was way off. <laughs> you were way off, and then you went even further away. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> I was thinking of like schools. I was like, when was the first school? <laughs> <laughs> They're just low five. Oh my god! I can say something that y'all can't say. I yeah. am older than the high five. You are. <laughs> wow. I, what year did you say the Beastie Boys coined the term mullet? 1994. So I'm the same age as the mullet. You're the same age as the mullet, and I'm two Weird years older than the high five. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you said that, people would think, damn, he looks good for his age. If you're like, I'm two years older than the high five, nobody would assume. You're like, you're 70? You look great for 70. <laughs> What do you think the next thing will be then? So there's potentially going to be something in the future more universal than the high five, but it hasn't happened yet. I mean, COVID has been a terrible thing for the high five. Mm. It has really hurt the, the popularity, I would assume. Here, here's what I think. I think that it provides, and this actually dovetails into something that I'm going to talk about later, uh, but this, I think that there is a, there's a market for the next thing, and we've already identified that... Uh, that it wasn't that long ago that you could flip the world on its shoulders uh, by cr slapping two hands together. So I think it's up to us to determine what the new high five is and to popularize it. It has to be simple. It has to be. It's got to be simple. When was that playground game invented where the kids would like, you know, you, like, you clap yourself and then you clap the other person's hand and then you clap oh, oh, schoolgirls. Yeah, that was uh, October twenty fourth, nineteen sixty seven. Like, what do you fucking mean? When did it come out? Like, like that was surely way before the high five. But they're high five and left and right in that. No, nah, it's like a mid five. A mid five. Like a I'd say is five, patty yeah. cake. That's a chess five. That's a chess pass five. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe maybe the chest five. <laughs> no. Maybe we popularize the mid five. <laughs> Like our high five, our high, we've been flying a little too high the last, like the hubris <laughs> alone the last 40 years or so. Like maybe we need to take it down a notch physically, metaphorically, metaphysically. Maybe we should start mid fiving. You know what I mean? Now, do we need to do like it's back of the hand, like two backs of the hands for the high five? Because mm. I feel like it needs to mechanically be different than just a high five. But then again, the low five, the high five, same thing mechanically. So maybe we don't. May, I, I think maybe touching hands going forward is a problem because of germs and stuff. Yeah. Who invented the fist bump? That's what, yeah, I was going to say. I don't know who invented the fist bump. I read Dusty Baker encouraging long distance high fives, which I feel like you only say if you're the inventor of the high five and you really want to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're just, you're it's just a trying stretch. to keep the, the long distance high five is a stretch. Yeah. Who invented oh. the fist bump? I don't know. That's a great question. We just need to figure out what the next thing is. People do elbow touches. Well, I mean, we're doing the jet ski one. 
<laughs> We're gonna do a jet <laughs> yeah, ski but that's five. Not... Yeah. With, I'd love to see somebody hands. do a home run and then do a jet ski five. We're gonna, we're definitely gonna elevate the <laughs> high five, but we need to be thinking of what the new high five is that then we can take credit for and popularize, right? Like Dusty Baker did. We like maybe it's like a, a like a knee knock. Mm. You just walk up and like slap I don't knees know. together. No, I don't. I don't like that. Maybe a toe touch, but then that's how dudes find each other in bathrooms at the airport. So maybe that could be confusing. I don't know. Wait, wait what? 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 Did Oh, you don't know about that? Yeah, like there have been a bunch of uh, politicians that have gotten caught doing it in the past. Uh, it was a popular thing to do uh, when it wasn't as, uh, well, well, for people that are closeted uh, or it wasn't as socially acceptable to, to be out and, and, and proud and gay. Uh, dudes sometimes would go into certain bathrooms and you would sit on the stall and then you would like touch the foot or like stick your foot under the thing. And then if the other guy touched it, then you would know that that person oh. uh, and you oh. were into the same stuff. And then you could get to know each other. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, a. Uh, Senator or a congressman got caught doing it in the 90s, <laughs> early caught. 2000s. Was that just like a, a reporter <laughs> staking a shit and there's, then the book came out? I think, I, think, I, think the, I think somebody, yeah, I think something like that. I just know that that's a thing that was, was done. So, we, well, first off, let's, let's take it back for a minute. What is a high, what is the expression of a high five? What are you trying to convey with a high five? Oh, it's celebration, right? Like it celebration is- and excitement, accomplishment. Somebody has achieved a good thing. Yeah, because right. I typically, I relate it to sports, but it could be beyond that. I think it's just so you're celebrating the act of someone. You, you could high-five cooking good bread. It could be anything. But so, Theoretically, yeah. So we, we, need to, we need to find the new, the 2021, to lead us into the future, to lead, to, so that we're 2051, people are still doing it. We need to find the <laughs> new thing that's uh, a way to express ourselves physically with another person that is simple and safe and doesn't transmit uh, germs and diseases, but is still f- super cool and hip and fun. And maybe makes noise, because if you do a good high five, <laughs> there's a pretty awesome oh, slap. The slap is so satisfying. That's my biggest 100%. issue with the long distance high five, is the best part is that contact. Doesn't work otherwise. I agree. I I feel like this could be a great thing for the common leaders to help figure out. If they want mm-hmm. to submit yeah. pitches. I feel like that could be a good move. Sounds like Jeff's already figured it out. Do you? Because I, I feel like, what? so what, is it a mid-five? Is that what we're talking uh, about? No, I like, don't think it's a mid-five. I don't know what it is. I just, I uh, just, I just think that you, you start at the beginning and you figure out what you're trying to do and then go from there. What we're trying to do is find a new way to celebrate an accomplishment or an exciting moment uh, without being uh, living in the past or paying royalties to Dusty Baker. And it needs a sound. Yeah, it does need Gotta a sound. Gotta have a sound. Yeah, and it has to be most likely contactless. So that's another layer, too. Hmm. I think we should have it be contactless, just workshop, at least covers everything there's no scenario at that point where you couldn't do it can you guys do that thing where you put your finger in your mouth and go like this <laughs> can anyone maybe we do that, that. <laughs> you just walk yeah just walk next time you want a high five just go at the same time <laughs> I it like makes a like, noise hey, let's, let's try I, not to uh, <laughs> spread yeah, germs. germs hey everyone yeah. put your finger in your mouth <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then f- <laughs> then fish rake it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe that's not the best one we'll put our fingers in each other's mouths <laughs> Well, that's not bad. That's interesting. <laughs> if, you can, if you can make that noise in someone else's mouth, <laughs> I'd be very impressed. <laughs> What's more impressive, eating an entire bar of 100% lint chocolate or whatever that was? Or no, I think that? if you could first time put your finger in someone's mouth and make the pop sound, <laughs> that's way more impressive. Can I try on you? Uh, oh! Yeah. Well, you gotta wash. Your, you gotta wash your finger first. Yeah, Ugh. I thought that that was assumed, but let's. Yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> we can <laughs> we can discuss the ground no. rules ahead of time if you want to. But I, I assumed I would wash my hands. Oh, what if I put on a glove? What if I put on a blue like a like a rubber glove? Yeah, I think the extra grip might cause the noise to change there. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. Well, we'll figure this out. We can cover this when we're in person throwing baseball. Ima- imagine if we both put our fingers in each other's mouths and then got a double <laughs> pop. Ha- that At the same that to time. Me, in a post-COVID world, will be the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever respected Gavin more than him. Jeff suggesting that he put a glove on to put hands in your mouth and your response was, it might damage the sound. It might break the integrity of the pop. You well, cannot. we want to make this count. <laughs> <laughs> we should also make sure we cut our fingernails. Ooh, that's another. Yeah, that's you important. Know, yeah. Oh, 
I'm I'm honestly I'm so up for trying that. <laughs> I am too. I'm pretty excited about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here practicing. So should we, yeah, should I we talk this. about like one of the actual things we planned on talking about and not because we're like almost 20 minutes into Dusty Baker. We talked about the high five. Why is that so funny to me? I don't know. It's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> uh, Andrew. Jeff. Andrew. Jeff. A long time ago, you came to me. A long time ago now. Uh, it How feels like months? six months ago. Yeah, at least. Probably like three, three or four it's, months ago. It's probably like you came months. to me. You came to me with something that you read that I thought was insane. And then we started talking about it. And I think we came up with a brilliant idea. And then we teased it. And then other important Apple related things got in the way. <laughs> and uh, fast forward uh, to like months of banana content later. And here we are. Do you want to explain wh what superheroes means and how it relates to face? So, yeah. So the superhero thing. It's really there is a an NPR podcast named Planet Money, and they tried this thing. They wanted to see if they could buy a superhero was essentially the idea. And they couldn't like they couldn't get. And in why? The door. Why did they want to buy a superhero? Uh, just to like representation of the thing, because like there's so many superheroes, especially in the larger companies catalog, and that you could essentially lease it out if you wanted to just having in a world in which franchises are important and superheroes are everywhere. It couldn't be a bad thing to have your own superhero. And there are so many available. The question was, could you acquire a superhero that nobody really knows about or cares about? And it wouldn't. It just was impossible. They were unable to do largely because of Groot. Groot is like the example of a character nobody gave a fuck about that Disney now makes hundreds of millions of merchandise with in right. the future. So it's like it's just it's not worth whatever you'd buy for it. We are in sort of an interesting position of Rooster Teeth's tie to DC. We're in the inside already in a sense. So the idea, I guess, at that time was if we could then, since we're already on the inside, could we get our own superhero? Well, I, I, the idea being uh, it was a response out of necessity because you thought, oh, it's cool. Planet Money is trying to, to essentially buy a superhero to be their new mascot or logo. But yeah. what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a troubling, uh, a really troubling trend. I've watched The Boys. I know where this goes. <laughs> I'm seeing that Planet Money is now going to have a leg up on every other brand because they have a superhero to defend them. Sure. Uh, not physically, of course, right? But we don't know that. I feel like if Planet Money and all these other entities are going to be out there hiring and buying superheroes to be their own ambassadors, Face needs a superhero to defend us and defend our brand against these other brands. I feel like it's a necessity at this point. No, I completely agree. And so I, I said at that time, it was months ago, that we should all look, we should all try to find the best DC character we could find that fits our idea. It can't be a popular character. We're not going to be able to acquire Batman. We're not getting Batman. But what is like an obscure, hard to find character? So that is a thing we all, I think, independently did, or at least I did. We talked about it. And I feel like we should present our examples. Okay, that's great. I know. I'll say I went to I went to the powers that be and I said, "Hey, we have this idea. We want to do this. They, they can we? Can you talk to Warner Brothers and see if they'll give us a superhero?" And they said, "Who's the superhero?" And I said, "Well, we haven't gotten that yet." And they said, "This is a stupid idea, and they're probably going to say no. But at least come back to us with a with a superhero." So then we decided. Uh, I sent out a link of lesser known uh, superheroes, and I thought we'd all go through. And what was the plan to pick ten each? I think. I think it was yeah, like that seemed like a lot after I went through the list. I have three. Yeah. I have three, and there's okay. really one I believe in truly that I think is a perfect encapsulation of this show. It honestly makes me a little bit worried about your future, Jeff, in a sense. Okay. Um, okay. I'm very excited about it. I think there's a clear number one, but I have three. Okay. I don't know how many you guys have. Well, why don't you go first? Okay. I assume I'm the only one that did any research for this, is my well, assumption. Well, you shouldn't and assume like that, but it's, it's, we've had months to do it. On this. We have. I thought we we're going to do this. I, I like crammed. I mentioned like four episodes ago. I cram homework. Yeah. So this I know, is I know. this is my first one. I don't think this is these are just some of them. I just think are great. I'm not saying we should pursue this. There is a an issue of a comic that is the Gorilla Wonder is strange sports stories. The Gorilla Wonders <laughs> of the Diamond. Look at how happy that fucking monkey is sliding into the plate. It just brings joy to my heart. Stealing a base. 
<laughs> I don't feel like they would be missing anything if we took the Gorilla Wonders of the Diamonds. I don't think that's a big loss for DC. <laughs> okay, so Gorilla Wonders of the Diamond. His name is Gorilla Wonders of the Diamond. It's a whole team. The entire team. It's an entire baseball team. So we're team buying of a gorilla oh. based baseball team. Okay. Yeah, it's, sure. it's all about these super smart gorillas that end up falling in love with baseball for no real reason, but they become obsessed with it. And then they enter a league and they just dominate. They're the greatest baseball team <laughs> in that league. <laughs> well, listen, in a world where uh, we learn to skateboard from monkeys, I think this makes total sense. It does. Now, the second one, and I just, I personally, this just makes me laugh. It, the character's name is The Printer's Devil. He is in two issues of Detective Comics. He's in 539 and 540. This is what he looks like. Uh, essentially, this character, he's a sports writer. He's a sports <laughs> columnist at the paper. And the paper is like, oh, we're going to sell our company. And he's like, we can't have that. That could fuck everything up. So he buys a goat mask and a trident and he starts causing mischief. And he ends up canceling out the sale. <laughs> that's his whole thing he's just a guy with a goat mask and a trident oh, and he's trying to so spook the new goat. owners no it's just it's, it's tom it'd be like in scooby-doo they amassed him oh it's tom he covers sports he's our beat writer <laughs> for the local team his trident okay. is a gun it's a trident dart gun thing like it's not even real it's just like the corniest he's just okay. he's a guy he's a guy that went to a halloween store bought a goat mask and a cape he also got like hoof boots He's a he disgruntled does. employee who stopped at the Spirit Halloween store. So this is, we're on to, to the number one. This is, I'm so excited about this. I've been sitting on this for a long time. The character's name. The character's name is the Smashing Sportsman because we are a baseball, you're a baseball show. He's in two issues of the Justice League, 55, 56. He is so unknown. This is literally the only image of him I could find online. And there's not much fanfare. <laughs> That is all you can acquire. Now, let What's me his name. His name. Well, OK, so his <laughs> villain name is the Smashing Sportsman. His character name is Marty Baxter. So let me just read the description of what the origin story of Marty Baxter is. And I took I bought the issue of the comic because I had to just verify some of the things that they say. And I also have some photos of those to back it. Marty Baxter's world came crashing down when he learned that he had arthritis. We got a, a character <laughs> with arthritis. That is his great struggle. The young baseball star now found it, in quotes, impossible to swing a bat and was absorbed in his problems as he sat in the stands watching the 1967 World Series that he'd otherwise been playing in. So this is a baseball player who cannot swing a bat anymore due to arthritis. I love this. Now, this is Jeff. This is now this is where I'm worried about you. What I don't need to worry about is what happens is he's watching the game and then this fucking alien cube falls out of the sky and hits him in the back. <laughs> OK, he's struck in the back by a black sphere. Baxter leaped to his feet with a stunning discovery in quotes. My arthritis pain gone. I feel like a new man bursting with power. <laughs> his euphoria lasted only a moment before his resentment set in. The metal railing in front of Marty crumpled between his fingers as he lunged from the stands. I'll make the sports world pay for what they did to me. I'm going to smash down the stadium. To the astonished <laughs> baseball players, he screamed, down with all sports. So his whole thing <laughs> is he was a baseball player who got arthritis, couldn't play anymore because of it, gets hit <laughs> by an alien cube in the back. And then he, uh, <laughs> here we go. I'm just going to send screenshots of the, the comic that I took of, uh, some Do you visuals. have this comic? I bought it. Yes. Yeah, specifically to like uh. confirm that's him ripping the railing off. And this oh, is there's him the black sphere. This is him screaming at <laughs> very confused baseball players down with all sports as he's ripping the railing off of the side of the thing. So I his whole deal out. is he hates sport. He, the villain, he's not targeting people. His entire mission is he's going city by city, breaking stadiums so they can't play sports in them. That's his whole deal. That's how they track him down. They're like, where's the next stadium? Oh, it's two towns over. How much time passed between that thing twatting him in the back and him ripping the railing off? Is it just a maybe, maybe six seconds? It is instant. <laughs> he immediately wow. he's That's ripping the, the thing. Laziest origin story I've ever. Heard. <laughs> So if that was a movie, the, the stadium would be coming down and like the opening <laughs> credits would still be like the names of the people in the movie would still be on the screen. Did anybody ever claim ownership over the Black Sphere? 
No, uh, I don't know about that. I don't think so. I think these were, I don't think so. I think they were independent alien beings that represented themselves as spheres. And then when they hit you, they powered you up, essentially, was the idea. <laughs> so he gets, he gets hit in the back and they're like, oh, fuck, this guy is destroying stadiums left and right. They, they cannot play sports because of this guy. So like Robin and some other character figure out what stadium he's going to be at and they find him destroying the stadium. <laughs> and then he, he like just destroys them. He like is super strong. He can blow wind like he's a ridiculous character. And he beats them up and is like, ah, maybe we ought to have a trade and I should join the Justice League like they do in the big leagues. Like it's all weird, like sports <laughs> metaphors. And so it's the whole thing is he breaks stadiums. Now, how they defeat him is maybe even arguably more bizarre. Uh, it turns out that the only weakness that these alien black spheres have is really shitty jokes, like really lame dad joke type jokes. <laughs> and so they defeat the aliens by running to where they're hanging out, these guys, and they start cracking bad jokes at Marty Baxter. And he starts laughing and the laughter causes the alien sphere to float out of his body. And then they zap it with a taser and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they defeat the alien. They also make a very clear point that they are not going to arrest Marty Baxter because he was possessed by the alien sphere. He is not liable for the stadiums that he destroyed in between those two events. So was he, he didn't, he, he wasn't like down with all sports once the ball left? No. As soon as the ball left, he's just like, ah, that was weird. I fucking oh, okay. <laughs> I broke like eight stadiums. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't arrest me. This Don't put like me in jail, please. That scene in, in Superman Returns where he stops the plane from like crashing into the baseball game <laughs> and Marty Baxter would just be like, oh man, son of a bitch. <laughs> I love the idea of Marty Baxter being at that game and getting hit by the sphere and starts breaking it anyway. Red <laughs> stops the jet. The stadium gets destroyed. <laughs> so that is my 1A, the smashing sportsman. There's like no fanfare about him. I don't think anyone knows he exists. Like, as I said, that is the only image of that guy I could find. I think that's a fantastic selection, Andrew, uh, and a great nomination. I think you did a wonderful job. Uh, that is truly like, I don't even know how you found that one. That is a that is a very minor, minor character. Uh, I have three as well. Do you, are, are you, if you're I'd ready, love I can to hear do them. mine. I would okay. love to hear. Them. I'm gonna post. I'm gonna post them. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing you did. I'm just gonna post them in the. Uh, thread. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly. So right. here, here's my three. <laughs> uh, I did this bit with your carts. Yeah. Now here's what. Here's what I. Uh, here, no. No. Here's what I'm doing. Uh, I. I looked at this as a fantastic opportunity to show uh, the difference between our three cultures. I don't think we lean into enough the idea that you're a Canadian and I'm an American and Gavin is British as far as we know. Uh, and, uh, and though we're all similar and we're all friends, we all come from different places, different worlds. We've had different experiences. We, uh, different ages. Different ages. We're, uh, you know, we're different cultures. So I thought this was a great opportunity to show the difference between our three cultures. Because as soon as we had the idea, I knew that, as an, that you, as a Canadian, were going to uh, say you would do the job and then do the job and be happy and excited about it. And I knew that as a British person, uh, we assume, Gavin... Uh, would take one look at it, decide I'm not going to do about that, and then ignore it until the moment it's time to do it. And then when we st we do the 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 podcast, he would go, "What? Huh? Uh, I don't know." Which I'm assuming uh he will be filling in very soon with, which I can't wait. And then I, as an American, <laughs> did the American thing, which is I copied off of your work, and then I'm taking credit for it. I'm okay with this. This yeah, is fine, and that's the yeah. difference between that's the difference between our three cultures. And uh, it's not that I didn't want to do the work; it's that I just <laughs> I wanted to highlight that because I thought it was a great opportunity to show how how similar but different we all are. Gavin, do you have your three ready? Yeah, just posted them. <laughs> um, you know, I've been in America a long time. I'm, I'm basically in America now. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happened is Gavin has posted mine, which looks strikingly similar to Andrew's. <laughs> I think the smashing sportman, sportsman is perfect. That's such a good one. That's the dumb. That's so stupid. I didn't realize. Like I, I knew there were some dumb superheroes, but that one is like, it, was that written on like a napkin? Like what? Who? It, what was the long? To, did, was it just meant to be a very temporary character? Yeah, it was very like clearly. I mean, he's not even. It's like technically, he's just a a physical shell for the alien sphere. Like Marty Baxter is just a guy that has arthritis. Is right. his character. 
Um, never seen again yeah. after that. No, he has two appearances, and that's it, and it's brief, and like there's no. Well, Eric posted a picture of him getting punched in the face. It's probably from the same comic. Oh, that's like the cover of the comic, I believe. Oh. And who's punching him? Is that Robin? I'm assuming? Robin dressed as Batman? Well, it's the big R on his chest. Bat Robin. Bat Robin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, it looks like Wonder Woman fell and hit her head, bonked her head. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it seems to me like we need to begin a campaign now to convince DC to uh, sell or give us... Uh, the Smashing Sportsman. He seems perfect. He is perfect, and it was literally the first one I looked at. I was, I was trying That's to pull it amazing. up, and I accidentally came on that one. And then I spent the next like five or six hours reading every single one on the list, um, and none compared. When did he come up with his name? The Smashing Sportsman? <laughs> was it after the first stadium? Or was it like right, so. after, right after the railing? I think, it's a, a, I think it's immediate. I don't know when. I don't think there's a time in which he... Um, I wonder if it was even him coming up with the name or if it was the alien sphere coming up with the name. It's another great question. <laughs> it's like, where did he begin and the sphere end? Uh, man, I, I'm fucking jazzed. I think that <laughs> face could do a lot worse than being officially protected by the smashing sportsman. I, he seems like the perfect, uh, he seems like the perfect brand defender. That's what makes me worried about it with you, Jeff, is he's a character with arthritis who can no longer swing a bat because of it. You have the arthritis. <laughs> you're going to attempt to swing a bat. I'm very nervous that we are one alien sphere away from you becoming the Smashing Sportsman. We'll, we'll put a net over the top of him. <laughs> I go out every day and pray to get hit in the back with a, with a black alien sphere, and it doesn't happen. So <laughs> if, if, if one day my prayers are answered, look out, world. <laughs> It's just such a weird thing to turn against. It'd be like if Peter Parker got bit by the spider and then he just decided to kill all bus drivers because the yeah. bus drove off with him. Because <laughs> it's the first thing he saw. <laughs> As a uh, baseball podcast, I think it fits perfectly with us. Well, I would, I would love uh, to hear what the comment leavers have to think about it. Absolutely. I don't think we're a baseball podcast anymore. I think we're a fruit podcast. That I'm okay with that as long as it's Apple. <laughs> not bullshit like banana apple the fruit not the product once again important clarification yeah sorry i was not paying attention <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was fucking great what is hello fresh oh my god i got that answer it's a it's an awesome pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes, but they're delivered. They're not at a restaurant or at a store, although at some point maybe they are in their life cycle. I don't know. I don't know where they originate, but, but the problem, the thing is, well, they end up in your house, delivered right to your doorstep. Uh, and you can skip trips to the grocery store because you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That They call that the CEFAs, Cooking Easy, Fun, and Affordables. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. The holidays can be hectic, ad reads can be hectic, but HelloFresh keeps things simple and clean with recipes and ingredients that cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time so you can spend more of the festive season being festive with your festive friends and your festive family having a festival festivus. Hello, Fresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every festive week, including vegetarian options that are festive, calorie smart options, you guessed it, festive, and gourmet options. I have no idea whether they are festive or not. Uh, they provide plenty of variety, though, I'll tell you that. Also, these ingredients travel from the farm to your door within a week and with a smile on. They're happy when they get there because they know they're going to be eaten quickly uh, and put to good use. Uh, making uh, people happy and uh, providing nutrients to their bodies. And you get all this convenience without skimping on the quality. We talked about it. They're fantastic. And they're festive. Well, let's not forget about that. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Face14 and use code Face14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Man, the three threw me after saying 14 a thousand times. I'll repeat the offer. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Face14 and use code Face14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. It is highly encouraged to voice the following HelloFresh tagline, America's number one meal kit. Advertiser, 
Hello Tushy. Show f face. Promo code hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. Hello Tushy, the modern bidet company washes away even the messiest of poops, leaving you with a better clean than toilet paper, which will scratch your sensitive butthole all to hell. Uh, I know from experience. I have had uh, quite a few uh, toilet-centric uh, difficulties in my life. You've heard me talk about them uh, in and out uh, of uh, podcasts and other content. Uh, as I go in and out of the bathroom, uh, it's been a myriad of issues my entire life until until I discovered the Hello Tushy uh, and uh, treated myself to a clean butt. Clean enough to sit on a couch naked if I chose to do so i would not i am not a nudist i'm fairly modest uh I typically don't sit anywhere naked i even wear uh sometimes full clothes to bed but uh, i'm not like a never nude i do shower naked but uh but i'm not crazy about being naked however my butt is so clean that if i wanted to i could i could sit anywhere i could sit anywhere in the house i wanted to with my butthole and it wouldn't matter it wouldn't know nobody would nobody would know it'd be it's just clean and fresh that's all you got to worry about here. Hello Tushy is the modern bidet for people who poop. Just poop, wash, and pat dry. The Hello Tushy bidet features, in this priority order, a clean bum with water washing you for a better clean than toilet paper. We talked about that. Washing with water is less irritating and more soothing for your butthole. It is easy to install. I am not a technologically minded guy. Uh, and even I am able to do it. It attaches to the toilet in under 10 minutes with no electricity or plumbing needed. Those are two things I'm not qualified to touch. Using a Tushy bidet reduces your toilet paper by up to 80%, saving you money in the paper department. It is also eco-friendly and stylish. Yeah, it looks like a Tesla, kind of. Or uh, maybe like a Lamborghini. It's like the Lamborghini or the Ferrari of uh of bidet attachments it is very sleek very modern very fancy so start washing with a hello tushy bidet for a better clean go to hello tushy.com slash face to get 10 percent off plus free shipping this is a special order for our listeners at hello tushy.com slash face for 10 percent off and after you buy and install your hello tushy show it off tag us and at hello tushy on instagram we are at face pod so what did you want to touch on, Jeff? You had you had a huge list, apparently. Oh, uh, your yeah. So well, the the uniform uh, innovation. Yeah, we're down we're down to just that, I think, actually. Perfect. And uh, so when I was in Florida last week, uh, as always, my my body was in Florida on the other podcast, but my mind and my heart and my brain were back here uh, with you guys uh, trying to come up with ideas for face. And uh, in that process, I actually had a really good conversation with minor league fan Jack and then producer Ben, uh, who's honestly in a league of his own. Uh, he really, we should just call him a league of his own Ben. Uh, he's, he's very, he's, he's really great. Uh, it really stands out next to minor league fan Jack. Let me tell you after spending four days with us too. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and in that process, they were actually super, super helpful. They, they, uh, I, I don't know where their ideas begin and end and my, you know, it was just like a long conversation, but I want to, I want to give them huge props, uh, because they were in instrumental uh, in the evolution of this idea. That I, I feel like you're going against literally what you said America does. You're, yeah, as well, the America I, move, you should have just solely taken credit for it. This is your genius. Yeah, I'm not. Maybe I'm not the best American. I'm trying, you know. Okay. I, that was enough. a great opportunity to illustrate the, the, the difference between our cultures. But I, 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 on a personal level, I strive to, to, to be mm -hmm. better. Uh, so anyway, uh, the world was turned on its head the day that Beef Bracelet came out. I think we all can agree with that. I think that nobody saw it coming. Uh, it smacked us all, flipped our brains around, changed the way we think about things, made everybody's life better. And then uh, we thought we were good, but we didn't rest there. We immediately, not immediately, but with the, uh, the appropriate amount of R&D time, uh, we hit them with our sophomore release. Too Spicy Icy, right? Nobody saw it coming. Totally different lane, a lot of symmetry between the products, totally makes sense. Uniform, uh, which, by the way, Uniform, uh, providing uh, or uh, combining the power of one with the fabric of the farm, Uniform, uh, can easily produce both products. Uh, it makes total sense. 
uh, so I've been thinking since then because there's like I'll be honest with you, people are chomping at the bit. They're they're like knocking on my door, like Jeff. We want what's the next two spicy I see? We want the next thing. I had somebody in Florida uh, at a at, at like a community meetup uh, offer to help fund the two spicy I see, and I'm like I appreciate that, sir. But that project is well on its way. Let's let's look to the future and what the next thing is. And in this process, I found I, that I felt a profound responsibility to create the next great thing, and that's not a good place to be when you want to create, right? Desperation isn't the best pressure. place to be when you're trying to invent. You don't want that pressure. Sometimes, some people thrive on, under it, but I, I find it's best just to kind of let it work itself out. I was having that conversation with, with Jack and Ben, you know, talking about how frustrating it is and how uh, I, I just feel this unrelenting pressure, and I, I didn't think I'd be able to come up with anything for a while. Then I read an article that changed my life. Did you guys know this is, and by the way, this is going to be phase one. I'll go ahead okay. and say this right now. This is phase, this is phase one of this pro- project, okay? Did you guys know that until 19, well, I don't know the year, until about 1914, until about 1914, in World War I, people didn't wear wristwatches? No. Yeah, pocket Are you familiar watch. with that? Yeah, people had pocket watches. Wristwatches were considered garish. Uh, they were also considered feminine. Uh, some people that did wear them were women, so it was considered like not manly to wear one. And this was uh, this was in you know the, these were very uh, different times back then, right? Uh, and that kind of thing mattered to people more, I guess. And it wasn't until World War One that when soldiers realized they didn't have time to be fishing around in their pockets for their pocket watch to see what time it was, they started wearing wristwatches, and it changed the world. All because. <laughs> All because some soldier didn't want to put his hand in his pocket because it would have to, he would have to take it off the trigger. That one moment, even though, even though, this is 1914 to 1918, right? Even though fucking uh, Patek Philippe in 1868, a Swiss watch manufacturer, Swiss watch manufacturer invented the first rich wristwatch for Countess Koskowitz of Hungary, right? So in 1868, the wristwatch is invented and brought out to the world introduced to the world and it's not until 60 years later that it rises in popularity fast forward to 2021 do you guys realize that the global luxury watch market is estimated at 7.18 billion dollars and that by 2025 it's expected to reach 9.28 billion dollars think about that that is nine billion dollars of wealth that will be generated in one year, seventy-five years after the or hundred years after the first dude decided I I should put this stupid watch on my wrist so I don't have to keep fishing around in my pocket. So you're saying <laughs> that's that there's insane. A, there's a clear there's a future for this. Like it's going to continue. What to I'm drive. saying, what I'm saying is there is a tremendous opportunity for us to look at what's in our pockets and put it on our wrist. Think about it. What do people, I've been doing research. I've been doing tons of, believe it or not, there's a ton of research on what people carry in their pockets. Here's a few of the most common things. Wallets, pins, keys, candy, snacks. We've covered that, of course. Loose change, dollars. uh, Koozies. Phone, comb, mints and gum, headphones, lighter, (laughs) chapstick, lipstick, makeup, (laughs) knives, flashlights. All we gotta do is put any one of those things on our fucking wrist and then popularize it and we will make nine billion dollars in 2025. Step it's no right sillier the than comb. what they did in World War One. Why not a wrist comb? Why not wrist keys? Why not like key gloves? Why not like Wolver keys? You hit a button and they extract yeah. that of your fingers. I don't know, but there what about Edward Locksmith hands, right? There's all kinds yeah. of stuff we could do. I am a big fan of the Swiss Army wrist. I think it should be Swiss a Army versatile wrist, product right? as like 20 different things. And my girlfriend brought up to me, she was like, the wrist wallets already exist, wristlets exist, that kind of stuff exists. And I'm like, yeah, but the fucking wristwatch existed for 65 years before somebody th- realized, oh, this thing is awesome as dicks, let's fucking use it. And now it's making billions of dollars a year. Wrist I'm telling keys you, keys exist. You go swimming. Wrist keys but we need to popularize them. It's not about that. It's okay that they already exist because they're not popular yet. I've seen the wrist phone cases exist too, like little pit boys people could put, but it takes the right group of people to look at it, see the need, see the potential, and then then fucking pounce on that potential. And boom, hit a thousand baseballs to the moon of success. And that's what I think we should do. 
okay? So phase one is we find stuff that we can take from our pockets and put it on our wrist. I already even looked. I put it in the face subreddit and then I took it out. I didn't want you guys to see it. They are These already exist. Slap, slap wrist, like slap bands, that are also uh -huh. pins. Perfect. They exist. You Wait, didn't what? know that. I didn't know that because they're not popular yet. Pins. But we can make our own. Yeah, like, you know, writing pin. A writing oh, pin, slap and writing I pin. I thought you meant like pin. Yeah, like a pin. So you don't need to carry a pin, a pin around anymore. A you pen. just slap a in pen. on your wrist. Yeah, and I heard P -E -N, pin. P E N, P E N, pins. It's just one idea. People from the south say it the same. Pin, pin. I am from the south, though, <laughs> so maybe I do. Uh, anyway, so like wrist pins, right? That's one thing we could do tomorrow. There's uh, so I what so what I'm presenting to you guys isn't necessarily a product. It's an idea. For a suite of products, it's if anything, it's an idea for a revolution. So, I mean, am I writing with my wrist, or am I just pulling a pen out of it? You you pull it off, and then you can write with it, and then you slap it back down. Or who knows? Because we <laughs> can invent things too. I'm just saying that exists. We can buy it. We can put our logo uh -huh. on it. We can change it around. We can we can improve upon it. Right? They had to improve upon the wristwatch, by the way. It used to have to have, in those days, it used to have to have a guard around the top of it because they had to protect uh, the crystal, and they were scared that it would break, and glass was very hard to come by. So they had these, like, metal things that covered, and then they just had holes where you could see the hours. Uh, but, and then we, uh, we improved upon that, and now you have a fully-faced glass wristwatch. We can improve upon these things that already exist as we popularize them and help usher wrist entertainment, wrist convenience into the 21st century. We need to drag it into the 21st century like they drug watches into the 20th century. I would have never guessed that the handshake came out after the wristwatch. <laughs> That's one of my takeaways from this. I, I think I like where your head is at. Do we have to like rank what is most important to us as far no, as No, I think we just I I think we just think about what would do well. And uh like I said, I'm not presenting you necessarily a the the pen, the slap band pen is an idea that I had. And I looked and it exists and, and we can work on that. But I, I would more just present to you the idea that start thinking in this direction. What, how could f face revolutionize people's wrists? We already did it once with wrist, uh, with beef bracelet. Obviously, everybody knows that. But with the help of Uniform, Uniform combining the power of one with the fabric of the farm Uniform, we can, there's <laughs> almost nothing we can't do. You know what I mean? Do we still need to have a wrist bracelet if we're doing this? We could. We could do whatever you want. We, we okay, I'm just curious if this is replacing, if this is like an innovation on the beef bracelet or if this it is... Could, we could, we could, we could further innovate the beef, beef bracelet. We could make it a part of this. It could maintain its own thing, uh, ma maintain its own identity. I, I, I'm open to all possibilities because I'm just, I'm seeing, I'm just seeing untapped potential. And I don't think anyone is better positioned than f Face to jump, to pounce on that potential. And we will all be billionaires this time by 2025 if we do it properly and then after we spend a couple maybe i don't know how long how much time it's going to take for us to go through phase one but uh then then my friends then we enter into phase two are you ready for phase two are you excited <laughs> about phase two do you think you can handle phase two i'm ready for it i hope i can okay what have, we, what have we been doing? What have we been doing all through phase one, which is a useful phase? It's going to be a financially beneficial phase for us. It's gonna, we're, we're all going to be very happy that we went through it. What are we going to do when we get to phase two? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to eliminate damn near everything we did in phase one because <laughs> we're going to eliminate the very pocket itself. We don't need it. It's bullshit. I, I've been, uh, I, I've lived with w women most of my life. They hate their pockets because they're tiny and useless and oftentimes sewed together. It's not fair that men have big pockets and women have small pockets. And also, the fucking, I, I, will, I will go so far as to say I've been thinking about this a lot. The back pocket is a goddamn atrocity. We need to get rid of it because that thing is a menace. Think about this, men. What do you put in your back pocket? You put your wallet in your back pocket. What's in your wallet? Everything you own that you can't possibly leave home without. And where do you put it? On the one spot of your body that you don't have eyes on? You got no coverage on? You can't see back there? That's the dumbest thing ever. It's like, here's everything that's important and valuable to me. I'm going to stick it on my ass and show everybody but me. I hate it. We need to get rid of pockets. And by doing that, what we will do is we will migrate the very pocket to the wrist. Think of a big floppy <laughs> pocket just hanging from your wrist. Throw your keys in there. You can see your keys. Throw your wallet in there. You got eyes on it at all times. It's in front of you. It's a lot harder to pick a hand than it is to pick a butt. You've invented the purse without a strap. <laughs> I have invented the wrist pocket. The purse exists. The wristlet exists. All of these things exist. Don't... 
Dude, eliminate the word invent <laughs> from your from your brain right now. We're not talking about inventing. I'm imagining like what I'm we're talking like about revolutionizing. <laughs> we're talking about there's... popularizing. We're talking okay. about we're talking about taking things that may exist already, but making them better and more prevalent, so that the the, the larger world sees them through the eyes, through the lens, with the possibility that we do, so that they, so that we then. Uh, incent them to want these products <laughs> to improve their lives. And then it's not a product at that point. We're, it's a whole goddamn movement. We're changing the world. We're going to get rid of pockets <laughs> in phase two. Phase one, we're going to improve wrists. Phase two, okay. we're getting rid of pockets. And phase three, we're all buying boats and fucking high-fiving off super yachts. I love it. I'm a big fan of this. I, I will have I, I kind of an idea in my mind already. I think I'll have a prototype next time we record. <laughs> I'm imagining I already have an idea. I love like it. a horse feed bag for my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. If that's what it could look like, yeah. I am all about the convenience and hands-free of things. Like, I, it's, a, it's a big... One of my great struggles... Maybe we the uniform could maybe branch onto this. I really wish that goggles were a popularized form of glasses. I cannot stand... I should have, I have the worst long distance vision. I have glasses. Never wear them. Don't like the feel of it on my nose. They're always sliding down. Always uncomfortable. I wish I could live in a world where I could just strap some goggles on and I'm good to go. If it, if goggles were popular, my vision would be substantially better in day to day life. Your nose indestructible, but can't hold up a pair of glasses. It cannot. It's too. I'm telling you, it's too slippery. It bobs and weaves. It not even <laughs> glasses can stay on. It. Just put some grip on the glasses, like grip tape. Oh yeah, then he then he looks like a 1950s shop teacher. No, I at get that it. point I I'm like just putting on goggles. Like what do you? Also, you know what? You know what, Andrew? It's 2021. We are living in the fucking future. What's more futuristic than goggles? I'm not even talking like cool futuristic, go like whatever you see a basketball player with goggles. Like I'm always like, I wish that was a look that was just acceptable. I wish that was a popularized <laughs> form of it. Or even like the pool, like when you put pool goggles on, I wish those for glasses existed. I wish that was just the thing. I don't, they're always sliding, so I don't wear them. Yeah, but you can't, no, there's I like bad it. peripheral vision with, there's a reason it's just right in front. On glasses. I will I will take a hit on my peripheral vision in exchange for them not sliding and not having to ever think about them. They're just locked in. You, but also, it, but it, once again, goggles exist, but goggles with perfect peripheral vision might not exist, but they could. Maybe that's been holding everyone back. And maybe if we can solve that problem, then not only can Andrew enjoy these goggles, but everybody can. Maybe every kid in high school will be wearing face goggles this time 2025 i don't know but i love it i love the way it's going and from what i can tell from the from eric's uh comments in the discord he's on board as well i think the most useful place for a magnetic implant would be around the eyes so you could just magnet glasses onto the front of your face i love that idea i like the idea i don't want them to put anything near my eyes i don't want any like a tad just a, it's scary it's a scary place just under the eyebrows Nah, no, I don't want any machinery going in there. I don't want, I don't trust Not it. machinery, just like a thin magnet. Yeah, but they're going to have to do a surgical procedure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was right. that? I ran, out of, I ran out of liquid. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. He got scared of the magnets. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I was talking and my mouth just suddenly went very dry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. So there you go, guys. Uh, I don't have a new product for us, but I have a vision of where we I feel like this. you just said like seven different products. I think we have plenty of products. For yeah, us. but I, I mean, I don't have like I don't I, I gave I gave jumping off points. Right. But I don't have materials prepared for you guys. I don't have logos and commercials and not like I usually come, you know, like with a product ready for you. Sure. To buy. I just have more of an idea of where we could take this. I feel like the last place I want more clutter is around my hands area. Yeah, that's what people <laughs> said before World War One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I, I have a prototype in mind. I don't know if you have any ideas, Gavin, but I immediately just have a thought. I could certainly come up with something for the next episode. I would love to have my phone permanently on the side of my wrist, kind of like where quarterbacks put their plays, you know? Where they like, <laughs> pop it up and they look at their plays <laughs> for they sh and they shut the thing. Uh, yeah. I would love to have my phone there and I could just like boop, 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 boop. It would be so cool. I, yeah, I like, I like where your head is at. I honestly, this is more grounded than I was anticipating. I can see a well, world where this exists. 
I spent a lot of time in a hotel room on my back with nothing to do but browse the internet for fake products. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it'll be interesting to see what we value for our pockets. What things yes. do we want brought to the front? I guess it's all of it, right? Is what you're saying? Because phase two is the destruction of pockets. So really, we can't have anything in there. Well, not to destroy them, but to, to render them uh, useless to the degree that uh, you can use that pocket if you need to. But everybody else is going to be using wrist pockets at this point. So you'll be, you'll be, you won't be in vogue anymore, you know? Wrist pockets. Have you ever been outside sweating in the heat and you have to then go somewhere that requires a mask and you realize your mask has been in your back pocket and you've been sat sweating on it for the last two hours? No, because I usually hang my mask around my wrist. Oh, what? so you're already, you're already putting you're, the wrist I already feet. wrist my mask. Without, and I didn't even think about it till this, till you said that, but that's exactly how I, I'm already doing this in practice. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really wristing your masks already? I always wrist my mask. I've been doing it for, since day one. I can't. Okay. Well, you're, Jeff is a wrist guy is what I've learned. Yeah. I, I hate the feeling of that. I can't uh, get, get shit off my arms. Mm, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I started wearing watches and it really, it's really, and then it's really opened up my love of wrist stuff. And I think okay. that there's a lot of, I think a lot of people feel the same. Well, I feel like let's, let's just explore. Cause I, I agree with you. I, I have no issue with the wrist. Where would you like it to be Gavin? Like what is, is there a different part of the body that would be more ideal than the wrist? To hold a mask? To hold whatever. It just seemed like you didn't like things around your wrist, generally speaking, is how I interpreted that comment. Uh, where, would, where would the ideal place be, if not the wrist? Maybe my back. <laughs> you just, are we just making a backpack at this point? Like, what, what type <laughs> no, of... Imagine a, imagine a backpack, except it's in the shirt. It's like a big, a big old <laughs> pocket, a big pocket on the back of a t-shirt <laughs> that I could just, like, st stick an iPad in or something. Yeah, but I like this. I feel like that's very specific because what you're going to sit down, you're going to that's going to stab you immediately. Whatever you got back there, <laughs> it'd be kind of like how Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow have their swords crossed on the back. But uh -huh. instead, it's like a laptop and an iPad or okay. like a pocket that could fit a water bottle in it or something. <laughs> just something where it's like, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to take the bag with me. But if I just have my water bottle and I just sort of slot it into my back like a sword, like I'm sheathing a sword behind my back, and I pull it out when I get to work. Class. Just, I mean, <laughs> I, th I think I think this is uh, this is exactly where we need to be thinking, st thinking like this, like think of, th take a step back and think of it this way. Why are pockets where they are? Because the first person who put a pocket put it there and then we all went, oh, OK, I guess that's where pockets go. And then you put a pocket there because the last guy put a pocket there and the person before that put a pocket <laughs> there. And so for hundreds of years, we've all had pockets where they are because we're just we're just fucking sheep. We're just sheeping our way through pocket town. Right. No, I feel like people have adventured with the pocket. There's, <laughs> there's sleeve pockets, there's chest pockets. I feel like people don't use them. Nah, people don't use them because they haven't cracked the code yet. People didn't use wristwatches till, we did, till the, <laughs> the need and the benefit was shown to them. And then they became a symbol of masculinity, and they became a symbol of patriotism, and then everybody wanted to wear them. That's all we need to do. We need to find our World War I pocket watch. That's all we got to do. I really like the idea of more pockets. I know we're supposed to get rid of them, but if somebody had like a clown's car worth of items and hidden pockets, that's just a great, that's hilarious. I guess I don't, I guess I don't want to eliminate the pocket. I just want to eliminate its, 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 its uh, intransigence in where it lives. I want to, I want to liberate okay. the pocket. You know what I mean? I see. I want the pocket yeah. to, I want the pocket to move to move for you. I don't want, I don't want you to put your shit in a pocket that is put there because of hundreds of years of people following in line and not thinking outside the box, not looking up, just looking at their feet and shuffling forward through fashion. Not, not, not even daring to look left or right and innovate. I want us to innovate. I want the pocket to go where you want the pocket to go. It's like I said a long time ago, you're talking about the mindset of like always punting on fourth down. People do it because that's what people do, not because it necessarily yeah, exactly. makes sense. You want your question. Not because it makes sense. Yeah. We need a culture change of not always going for the pocket. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where bold people make bold decisions and find bold successes. <laughs> is the product called bold like i that felt very I specific I'm just saying. To like what i'm just no i don't know i'm just saying like that's how i think this is the this could be a, a huge untapped potential future for face a, a division of fluke face uh, a division of uh of uniform uniform <laughs> uh, combining the power of one with the fabric of the farm uniform you know what i'm saying so 
I just I I think we would be remiss. Uh, I think we'd be it'd be a, a tremendous wasted opportunity. Also to cement face in the social. Uh, the permanent social fabric of the world. Well, we're already going to reinvent the high five, right? What mm -hmm. better way to follow it up than to reinvent <laughs> the pocket and the wrist? It's it, the very wrist itself. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to have a prototype, or at least I'll try to next time we record. I have an idea. Yeah, I'll mine. have one too, but we might not get to it because of all the chocolate Andrew's going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's going to be easy. I'm going to be on my victory lap. Well, I guess, uh, fuck, when is, what, what day is next Wednesday? 27th what, what that or no i guess thursday we'll record next Thir week we'll right? record thursday yeah we were yeah so time. that'll be one day before i out nugget before the nugget nugget day yeah. yeah so the chocolate good lead in also banana it's a lot of food stuff lined up <laughs> 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 there's a lot of food stuff lined up that i we didn't see coming an no, hour and a half ago <laughs> absolutely not we're a food podcast yeah. according to Eric. <laughs> are you okay with us being a food podcast eric as opposed to baseball i feel like you kind of didn't like the idea of us being a baseball podcast i di it didn't feel like we ever embraced fully the baseball podcast because jeff wouldn't throw the ball so now i feel like i feel like you're embracing the food embracing nuggets embracing chocolate being anti-banana but pro apple weirdly i i mean i i'm fine with being i only produce food podcasts at this point so yeah that's fine okay hey eric make sure can i ask you a question while you're here yeah yeah what's up what's in your what uh do you have anything in your pockets right now uh no i just put on shorts and i don't have anything in my pockets while i'm sitting at my desk hmm if you were gonna leave the house what do you think you would throw in your pockets to leave uh i would grab my keys my mm -hmm, phone mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. wallet my mask mm -hmm. uh, uh maybe a chapstick and put it in the little chapstick part of my <laughs> you know like there's like a little mm -hmm. tiny yeah yeah, yeah. oh the where the ipod yeah. nano goes yeah, that's where the iPod Nano goes, but until I charge that f and get it working from 2007, I will just put a chapstick <laughs> there instead. Um, those are kind of all of my go-tos, I suppose, for um, what, what I would need for my pockets. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 can see, I can see a world where all of those things live on a wrist easily. I, yeah, I mean, great. I, I, I'm, I'm all for what you're talking about here with the wrist pack and everything. I know a lot of professional wrestlers who wear unironically wear fanny packs everywhere yeah. all the time constantly and swear by them swear up and just like oh, i didn't think they would be that helpful and i'd never leave without my fanny pack they don't have anything in their pockets everything is in the fanny pack i've never tried one so this is doable not i'm not a fan of the fanny pack but i'm i am a fan of the idea of like i realize there's some there's some adjacency to what we're doing here so and, and so that's I, gonna... and that's why i believe in uniform uh, thank you for <laughs> believing in uniform. Uniform. Combining the power of one with the fabric of the form. Uniform. Uh, okay. Well, that's great. I, uh, I, I, I think that there's a lot of, I think keys alone, there's a lot of opportunity. I can't wait for the magnet approach of this and it being too powerful and your wrist is getting stuck together. That is what I'm very excited <laughs> for as the initial prototype. <laughs> I, I was making a note. I'm just making notes of what prototype I want to make and I just found an old... I found a picture. I think I showed this to Jeff. Andrew, what do you think is happening in this picture? Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Okay. <laughs> what is well, this? Well, <laughs> it's, it's like the worst Spike Jones video. Or like <laughs> Michelle Gondry. Um, we're in somebody's mouth. <laughs> is that Jeff? I think this is Jeff. Doug I would have assumed Jeff's mouth. No, but what it is? It looks like I'm in the that, photo. It that does, but it's so <laughs> bright. Now. I just assume it's not the back. The people in the background, Jeff, is not what you immediately notice when looking at this photo. <laughs> <laughs> this Andrew is a uh, a nice. This might be the only one in existence. A nice picture of Jeff and myself taken from inside minor league fan Jack's mouth. Oh, that's horrendous. <laughs> Why? We'll have to we'll have to ask him if he's okay. <laughs> but Why? I don't think I've ever seen a picture of people from inside someone's mouth before. Yeah, it's like it's like tongue POV. It's like yeah, it's about to a say. camera on Jack's tongue <laughs> when he's talking. This that's is what it would look like. this could be the new Instagram craze. Inside the I, mouth I, portraits. I love. Yeah, this. I, I would love to see more of these. It was basically we we're in Australia having lunch, I think, and I had my 
360 camera out and Jack just walked up. He, he arrived late because we, uh-huh. <laughs> we left without him. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to get a separate Uber. And then he just walked up while I had that and he just put my camera in his mouth for like one second. But because it's 360, I then like went into the file and it was originally <laughs> pointed at the back of his throat, but I just spun it around <laughs> and you can see out of his mouth. <laughs> it's so <laughs> disgusting. It looks so wet in there. It looks like that like uh, yes. Cortana level in Halo. It how looks m- dirty. How <laughs> many <laughs> how many bites does it take for that mouth to eat a nugget? Is what I want to know. <laughs> we need to do measurements. I think it's more like how many nuggets can that bite e- eat in one? Can that mouth eat in one bite? It looks not safe for work. No, it, it looks does. like alien. There's like a very yeah. alien vibe to this. <laughs> you never see behind someone's teeth and lips. <laughs> Very rarely. <laughs> Outside of video games. Like, I feel like that's always the classic, like, oh, I've morphed into a character. Let me, like, see through their face. Oh, I just like man. There's, oh. there's, a, there's a picture of two thirds of this podcast from inside Jack's mouth. I, love it. <laughs> I don't think you could identify somebody from the inside of their mouth. I don't, like, without context. Do you think a dentist could? I bet a dentist could. I think a dentist probably could, but I don't want to know that about somebody. I don't want to ever be at a level where someone would be like, oh, imagine if I fucking knew that was Jack's mouth. That would a crazy <laughs> pull that would have been. Imagine if I yeah. would have been like, yeah, it looks like Jack's mouth. I'd recognize that fourth tooth from the left anywhere. <laughs> Eric's, Eric's not a fan of the lips. There's something about seeing the teeth in like the top of like the roof of the mouth that's like, oh, that's gross. For some reason, seeing the lips over the teeth, <laughs> but they're the inside oh, of Jesus the lips Christ. is so like it really I put it in the chat this. It looks like a Cronenberg film. It looks like <laughs> long live the new flesh, like disgusting the fly level shit. I don't like this. Like I keep looking at it because I can't look away. I want to see a zombie movie entirely from this perspective. I'm just like one zombie, just like the worst. Be terrible. Uh, I think that's a that's a great comp, Eric. It definitely feels very like Videodrome esque. Ugh. I think maybe if we ever all if we're ever all together at RTX, we should take and we do a panel. We should take a picture of the entire cast of Face from no. Inside Jack's Mouth. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. That's a great. I'm idea. okay with that. That's great. why. What that's, were you thinking? Well, I was just gonna. I don't think we need more mouths out there. Like, I, if anything, I feel like this photo should be deleted. It's it's disturbing. <laughs> I don't want this to be a trend. Just like the idea of Jack's mouth being a yeah. camera. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest <laughs> angle for the Truman Show. <laughs> it's the mouth camera guy. Maybe that's the next direction we'll move into: is re- taking stuff out of our pockets, moving into our wrist, then eliminating <laughs> the wrist altogether and creating mouth mouth products. I thought you were going to say move everything from the pockets to the mouth. I was like, no, we should not do that. <laughs> just stole my keys in Jack's mouth. <laughs> oh, the smashing sportsman. I love it. He's our guy. He's our guy. I can't think of another superhero who more uh, deftly uh, uh, exemplifies the face brand than the smashing, than the uh, the uh, arthritis ridden smashing sportsman. (laughs) It's perfect. He fits us and nobody gives a shit about him. It's fantastic. Like nobody. I love it. I'm excited for the world to learn about the smashing sportsman. What do you think he's worth? (laughs) I don't know. I think I if we if we showed that photo of Jack's mouth, they would just give it away. Like if we used it as a threat, <laughs> it's a terrifying image. <laughs> and I gotta say, one thing I liked about this episode, really light on the fruit talk. Very yeah. light on the fruit talk. We could even, I, yeah. I know we're talking about this before, smashing sportsman bats, potentially. That could be a bat thing in the future. You can't oh, yeah. a bat, visit the bats. We sell bats. A lot of opportunities there. There's a lot of opportunities there. That's fun. I think two pretty good episodes there. Yeah, two really good. And I'm yeah. excited for guys. next week. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait. I'm so excited for next week. I didn't. I was afraid we wouldn't be able to cram all this into two episodes. And not only did we, we, we crammed like banana content. We crammed chocolate content. There was a <laughs> lot of directions we went that I, I didn't even expect. We talked about Dusty Baker for like 16 minutes, which is Dude. not what I anticipated, but <laughs> worth it. Yeah, but but what a mind fuck to find out that the high five. The high fucking five was invented in 1977. Well, a load of shite. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, well, Gavin, I can tell you as someone who lived in the before times, it was dark. <laughs> we, did, we didn't know how to... There was a lot of patting on the back. It didn't feel quite right. Uh, things were a little bit more homophobic back then, so we didn't pat each other on the butt. It was yeah. uh, we didn't celebrate properly. We just didn't. And uh, I remember the I remember the great day uh, when everything changed. And and uh, I can see how I, I, only living in a world full of high fives, it would be hard for you to comprehend uh, a world without. But it, <laughs> I was there. It was dark, and uh, you should you should hope that we never get plunged back into that darkness again. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of F*** Face. I believe this was the 75th iteration of this podcast, and probably the 65th to mention some sort of a food-related challenge. Uh, if you liked it, uh, tell somebody about it, because that's how we survive. And if you don't tell somebody about it, one of us will die. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha